getting into the graphical settings for optimized settings, primarily for the GPU, your first port of call needs to be the option to select or deselect hardware ray tracing. Now, normally in a UE5 game, this would toggle Lumen's hardware ray tracing path, giving you higher quality reflections and better in diffuse direct lighting for a cost. In this game's case, that is true. For minimal GPU cost on an RTX 4060 at native res 1440p, you can get much better reflection quality using triangles instead of blobby SDFs. They'll include dynamic objects and give you more stability, with less noise on them due to accurate traces, as we can see here, 6% on the GPU in this scene. For diffuse lighting, the difference can be more subtle, but as we can see here, you can get more accurate bounce lighting with more red lighting hitting adjacent geometry here in this scene. And on the very high setting, it is common actually to see the hardware path being faster as we see here. Now this would all be quite excellent and I'd recommend to turn it on for higher end GPUs, but your CPU would need to be up to snuff. As we can see here when CPU limited, the Ryzen 5 3600 is 25% slower with the hardware ray tracing path on. So you'd have to sacrifice quite a lot of CPU performance for that accuracy. So it really would only be for beefier CPUs at that point. Now that would be the case were not for one issue. Let us read the description of this option again. It enables real-time ray tracing for more realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections. Wait, shadows? Ray trace shadows? Yes, this option also turns on ray tracing for local light shadows, not from the sun or moon, and that unfortunately makes the setting kind of worse because the ray trace shadows are problematic. Let me give you some examples. In this scene here, for example, having hardware RT on leaves this shadow looking incredibly grainy and wrong, while the virtual shadow maps on the left look so smooth and stable on very high. It also runs better on the left while looking better. It looks like the local RT light shadows with that hardware RT option seem to lack any and all good denoising. So all those environments with penumbra shadows are just stippled and messy. I have a hard time imagining this is intended, but I tried it on three separate PCs, and that is the case visually here. Another reason why this option is kind of bad is because the game is using Lumen fallback geometry for these local RT shadows. And Lumen fallback geometry is missing tons of detail on objects that the VSM version will have. Like here, notice the missing shadows on the right hand side. The cables are not casting a shadow on the wall anymore. And the shadow underneath the cables that you can see on the right hand side is completely incorrect because it's only done in screen space now. While on the left with VSMs, you're gonna get full coverage. Using that low poly lumen geometry for direct shadows is honestly not a very good idea. And it will cause often issues like this throughout the entire experience. So I'm kind of confused why this option exists at the moment as it does. If the hardware RT option in the menus just toggled hardware lumen, I would be thrilled. But at the moment, it also forcibly turns on these visually poor hardware RT shadows that are just grainy and missing objects, like here where they turn off all the individual lights in the intro scene of the game. Till this is patched and made a separate setting in the options, I do not recommend anyone use the hardware RT option here. Regarding software lumen though, mid to low spec GPUs will want to lower that setting. As we can see here, there is an immense performance difference between very high and high or medium. A 66% performance improvement going down to high and a near 100% improvement going down to medium. That is frankly absurd for such a small visual difference in many scenes. Now, usually for optimized settings, I would say use medium here, but here I recommend both high and low optimized settings. Use the high setting as the medium setting in the open world sections of the game can show quite a lot of flickering of ambient inclusion on the grass, so definitely use the high setting here in spite of it being a bit heavier. For the reflections, the main difference is found in reflection resolution, being almost quarter res looking at high and medium, and improving performance by 12% on the 4060 in this scene here. You can also see it trace less accurately, with a 5% performance uplift on medium and high as we see here, though that more accurate tracing on the very high setting has a lot of noise in it. Lumen denoiser is definitely kind of low quality. Here I would recommend the 4070 level GPUs go for very high in spite of that, while lower end GPUs just set this to high to cache in on that better performance. Next option to look out for is shadow quality, which controls VSM quality, and this has an immense performance implication. For directional shadows from the sun or moon, as we can see here, you can improve performance by 74% going down to high and by 85% by going down to medium. And visually, the difference in such a scene would look incredibly minor. You can only really see that the VSM resolution is higher, so its stair steps are smaller, but it's reducing performance that much, and it's kind of unreasonable, and it's still imperfect 
effect due to using rasterization and having stair steps. For a more diffuse penumbra shadow, like from the sun or the moon, the difference will be even smaller. Here there is scarcely a difference between medium and very high in spite of the performance improvement. Only low shadows turn off the denoising and look kind of unviable actually. So you might be thinking medium is the best bet for optimized settings, but looking at indoor lights makes that a tricky proposition. As we can see here, indoor local lights have the biggest visual difference between the settings. On very high, they have the resolution increase I talked about earlier, but most importantly they have denoising on, so they are much cleaner shadows as a result with far less noise in them. On medium, penumbra shadows seem to be disabled altogether, while denoising is still off, so it decreases the quality further, and once again load looks kinda bad. Here in a scene like this, the sacrifice going down to high or medium is palpable, but very high is still super costly. The biggest issue with the shadow setting though is how it interacts with image reconstruction. Basically anything below very high has issues with the game's image reconstruction, causing a lot of noise on all the image reconstruction options you can use. So if you are upscaling, the game's shadows can look quite grainy at times. I would say FSR 3 and DLSS look arguably the worst here. The only way to make it look better is by utilizing the very high setting and putting up with its higher cost and kind of negating the advantage of using image upscaling. Given how low-end GPUs will be using image reconstruction here in general, this is quite a hard option to optimize for. In my opinion, I will split the settings here, unfortunately, and leave it up to you. If you just want raw performance and don't mind noise, use medium. But if you find noise distracting and you are using image reconstruction, then you have to use that very high setting. The other settings deserve less consideration as they have less of an effect on performance. Looking at the foliage quality, this option increases the amount of scattered foliage in the open world terrain of the game, with it looking noticeably sparse on the low setting. Here, given the smaller FPS loss from this setting, I recommend low-end GPUs go for high and 40, 70 and above GPUs go for very high. View distance somewhat confusingly adjusts the amount of vegetation drawn in the distance usually with little change from very high to high, but with a more visible loss to vegetation in the far field at medium and obvious cuts at low. Here I recommend low-end GPUs go for high, while 4070 and above GPUs aim for very high. The last setting that deserves mention is texture quality. Now unlike some other Unreal Engine games, I have yet to measure any meaningful performance consequences for this being at very high on an 8GB GPU, even at native 1440p with software RT on. At least in a benchmark, there weren't added in frame time spikes. That does not mean they are not there though, it's just hard to find them perhaps? I did notice though the lowered anisotropic filtering quality on world textures at the lowest settings. The setting also does not seem to aid the quality of textures that are already lower quality in general, even when set to very high. Here as a precaution I will recommend very high textures for 12 gig GPUs and medium textures for 8 gigabyte GPUs. With that being said, these are our various optimized settings. Some usual Unreal Engine tucks here in regards to reflections and GI quality, but with more caution added there for the shadow setting, which can look a bit odd at medium indoors at times. It's your choice. In total, in an outdoor scene, optimized settings at native 1440p DLAA on an RTX 4060 can increase performance by 106%, and honestly in a scene like this, I think you will struggle to see any sort of difference in almost anything other than grass. But here in the middle, I included an optimized low settings with the shadow set to very high for reasons that I mentioned earlier, and even with that setup, we still get a 53% performance uplift in this scene. Indoors are where shadow settings are more obvious, and optimized low settings there with medium shadows can increase performance by 119 percent. Beyond issues with some penumbra shadows, you would have trouble noticing the difference. But for those troublesome shadows with noise, the very high option here in the middle still increases indoor performance by 67%. So you can have incredible performance wins on the GPU in this game without losing too much quality. Using low optimized settings on an RTX 4060 with medium shadows at 1440p DLSS4 balance mode, I saw typical areas in the open world on the first planet being above 60 FPS even while in combat, which felt good on the mouse with little issue. Only the more dense built up town area in the game would challenge the GPU more, at worst bringing it down to just around 50 FPS. So within a good VRR window as I see it, that is presuming your CPU is up to the task in keeping the game having those clean frame times.